Hello, welcome back to another live stream. My name is Christian Golick, and today I am <clears throat> talking with my good friend and fellow creative, Michael Kane. We're having kind of just a just a chat, just discussing a something something that we both cringe at, and that is mm -hmm. seeing trends on social media seeing uh seeing things that are just so overused and cliche <clears throat> but they continue to be used until they're uh being used very poorly in our opinions um so we'll be talking about trends but more importantly how we as creators we as visual visual artists can make work that you know is relevant but not necessarily trendy but more so timeless so that it can live on past the uh, death of the trend as all trends come and go so i want to bring michael on here how you doing michael i'm fine how are you christian i'm good i'm good thanks for thanks for hopping on yeah, thanks for having me on your TV show. My TV show, my YouTube live. People call it a podcast too, which I wouldn't call it a podcast since there's video and it's a live stream, but whatever we want to call it. Shout out to my <laughs> vice principal. I made it. You were wrong. He said he wouldn't you <laughs> wouldn't be on TV. <laughs> He's wrong. He said it'd be nothing. <laughs> Ouch. Well, you're something here, Michael. <laughs> Beyond just here, you are a, in my opinion, you are a great photographer and creative person. And over the past year, I've seen a very steady uh, evolution uh, of your creative visual skills. And I'm very impressed with your work. Thank you. I appreciate that. Likewise, you've been doing it much longer. And it all started uh, visiting your home, at asking to hold your camera. And what does that do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, what was that? Two years ago. Before the shutdown. Yeah, when you yeah. came over. There was still snow on the ground. Okay. It was pre-pandemic. I know that. Yes. Yeah. 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 When you came we sh over. We, we shook hands that day. I remember vividly. We, we didn't do the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm seeing you, even though we're both vaccinated, you're getting an elbow. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to pick your brain today about trends because mm -hmm. you and I have, I don't know if objective view is the right word. We, we, we see past the hype, I suppose. We see past the um, popularity of what we see on social media and we look at it with a much more analytical lens and i wanted to kind of get your take on stuff that you see on your instagram or your tiktok facebook whatever that like you see it and you just wish that you didn't see it because you see it all the time um like for me for me the number one thing that I see so much is the uh, shot. There's a photo or a video. People do videos too. It's always in slow motion. People do videos of like the girl holding her hand behind her back, leading the boy who's taking the photo or the video. And, you know, it's a sunset and the cornfields and stuff. And they're briskly walking through like <laughs> Michael. It needs to stop. I've seen it a million times and it really wasn't that good the first time, but people love it uh, and they keep recreating it. I don't know. What's, what's, what's your most cringiest trend that you've seen? It's funny you bring up that one because um, this Sunday I have plans to go to a sunflower field with my partner and uh, my intention is to parody just that uh, the hand being pulled through. 
That's um, fine. Yeah. <laughs> but not, but it's not genuine. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it, <laughs> it's to make light I, I, of that trend. <laughs> if I saw a photo of that from you, I would automatically know that it's parody, even if there's no context. Like, like even if you didn't make note that it was a parody, I would know just because of your personality. Are you saying you don't believe I'm a wanderluster? Genuinely, that is exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> because you would never identify yourself as a wanderluster. Yeah, I, kind of, I really, I really dislike that term. Um, I think it's just very well. It's a perfect association with what we're talking about. Yeah, wanderlust. It's such what a what a terrible hashtag that is. <laughs> it is, and you know what? This is. Sadly, this is the name of a song from one of our both both of our favorite bands, Megadeth. There oh. is a song called Wanderlust. And I'm like, why? And it's so <laughs> out of character. It's so it's not like any other Megadeth song. Dave Mustaine yeah. just decided to be a hippie one day. Right. Um well, yeah, I, I to go back to your question about like what do I cringe at? That's a trend. Um, I don't know if it's um, well, like some some certain props they they can go away, uh, like this the uh, glass sphere or these these prism effects they put in front of, or people doing this with their phones, like. It's a, I, yeah. it, it's a bit, look, if someone comes up with it, that's cool. That's original. It's unique. Um, and I get that other people want to try it out. But like uh, sometimes they, they make it standard practice. And I feel like they're not ready to let it go till someone tells them to. Um, and I think it's better for these ideas to not just be borrowed, but just to be, to inspire your own ingenuity. Like, oh, wow, someone did this with this glass ball or this phone. They use this to create this effect to inspire them to create their own effect and kind of go down their own path and build upon that. They did. They, they just, they just borrowing and reusing over and over and over and over and over. Right. And, and they're not contributing anything. No, it's just uh, copying. It's not contributing. Copying. Copy paste. Yeah. Yeah, I I was curious in the photo world, and I I know exactly what you mean, with the the prism or the phone at the at the right angle, so you mm -hmm. get the reflections. Like I know, I've seen that a million times. What else in photography do you see people doing that, you know? Yes, it's a good idea, or, or rather, it's a clever idea. It's a unique idea whoever made it in the first place it's a unique idea it's a visually interesting idea but it's a trend and mm -hmm. if you were to put yourself like fast forward 20 years and you saw that photo would it be a good photo or would it just be you know um uh, okay cool whatever move on like oh i remember that yeah. I, well, I could I could reference something that hasn't aged well. Uh, that's okay. still used. Uh, selective color. Oh, see oh that reaction. God. The, the image entered your. But it's you still see it though. It's still very much around, and it's being produced today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you'll go to like a, a farmer's market or like a. a, a some, you know, like there's an artist there and they, they have nothing but selective color pictures. Um, that's still a thing. And I, I and I remember the first time I saw the long time ago, my friend showed like it was built into his camera. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But it didn't last very long, but people haven't let it go just yet. But it's not not trendy. I, I I remember I remember when I first started getting into photography, like this is 2012 and I remember doing that effect and I was like, Oh cool. Now I know how to do this effect. Mm -hmm. And then the next day I was like, I'm never going to use this effect <laughs> because what did it, what did it contribute? And that's, that's my biggest thing is 
something's visually interesting. Whenever the the selective color effect first came out, I have no idea when that happened. When the when the selective color first came out, when the prism was first used, uh, like it was interesting, and people did it because it was cool. Mm -hmm. But you know, if they were to sell that photo, or they were to offer photography services to a business say a coffee shop are you going to take photos of the coffee shop all through the through the prism are you only going to have the coffee in color and everything else black and white is that really going to benefit that coffee shop or is it just satisfying your creative copying needs you know it, it almost seems like a social media checklist like people see, you know, what what they're seeing over and over again. They're like, "That's what I need to. That's what I need to do to be relevant to to th throw my hat into the ring." So, um, or I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Christian. Yeah, no, so no, no, no. I, I, I know <laughs> you mean. Yeah, it's it's the relevance. Like we we as artists, as creators. I mean, really, as anyone, we want to be relevant. And we want to let people know, hey, we're up with the times. We, you know, we can take we can, we can uh, take part in this culture of look at this cool prism effect. Look at this selective color. Although I don't think selective color is relevant. Uh, we still see it, but it's not. People don't go wow at at that anymore. Um, at least I don't think. But it's like that fight for relevance. If you and this is just my opinion, and I want to I want to know your thoughts, too. If you are just fighting every day to be relevant, trying to, you know, hash out what is trending on social media and trying to, you know, OK, that's popular. How can I rework this and, and you know, put this out on social media, too, but with my own you know, spin or rather just my own name. Like if you're constantly focusing on, you know, finding, finding what's trendy, copy it, put it out, finding what's trendy, copy it, put it out. Yeah. You're I mean, just, the same thing goes with uh, the calendar year. It's, it's, and that's something you've probably seen too. It's just like, it's flag day. I better go through all my pictures and find a relevant flag post and have all my hashtags ready and post it at AM that day. Like, I don't. I don't care about that. I don't. I don't need to push mm -hmm. a role because at this point, there's ten things celebrated every day of the calendar year. It's like it's it's the Beatles Day or it's a, it's Strawberry Day. It's cheesecake. If you know, I, yeah, right. Just, I, that that shouldn't dictate what I how I want to express what I I've been working on or my creativity or what I want to share. It, it and that's that's something else. I I think is kind of relevant too. It crosses. So I don't know about video, but definitely with social media and photography with with what do you mean the, the calendar year dictating what you're going to cr uh, share and what you're going to promote oh yeah oh i i know i know what you mean i see it all the time a good example is especially during the pandemic is like you know people weren't allowed to be around each other a lot of large scale events didn't happen a lot of fireworks shows didn't happen but sure as you know fourth of july people would go through last year's stuff and you know, post their best firework picture, even if there wasn't any fireworks happening in their town that year, just because they feel obligated to do that. Again, with just staying relevant, staying trendy, doing what everyone else is doing, you know, doing what they the analytics tell them to do. That is a scary sentence right there. Doing what the analytics tell them to do. My whole goal like the way i operate every day is i want to make timeless content i want to mm -hmm. make something whether it's for myself whether it's for a client of mine whatever visual that i'm creating whatever mm -hmm. video i'm creating i want that to look good 20 years from now right so the fact that you know analytics say oh 
well, these these types of photos with the crystal do better than photos without the crystal and people going, you know what? I'm going to throw everything, all of my, uh, you know, pretense knowledge out the window and just do just do uh, crystal photos because analytics and the algorithm says so like it, again it, it comes up with that being relevant but you're just you're t you're taking short term gains and mm -hmm, sacrificing yeah. long term gains because you're going to look i mean honestly you're going to look 5 years from from when you took that crystal photo and you're like <laughs> that doesn't look good you know and, and like like if you're building a portfolio of, of your best work and you look back and all you have is trends and all the trends have you know faded at that point your portfolio is gonna suck no offense to anybody but like it's gonna suck because there's nothing worthwhile if you make that if you make timeless content which i do want to get into in a little bit making timeless content then yeah, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, you can still reference back to that and go, this is a solid piece that I want to put in my portfolio. I want to show it off. This is what I can do. It's never going to fail you. But going with the trends, it's just... <laughs> after, after the algorithm says you're done, you're done. It's almost like... Um... The filters people use with their their social media, um, it it takes from the focus and um, like the, it's just putting a, it's putting a, a filter over whatever your 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 subject is in front of you. And again, that's just that's not going to last very long. And it's, I think it goes. I know we chatted a bit about this yesterday, but it goes back to just you know, keeping the focus on your subject and not the distraction of what the trend is. I, it, so okay, I like this. Is this is a, yeah? This is this is related. Um, and you might actually resonate with this as having such an in-depth music background. In video, in video, you typically put music in your videos. Uh huh. And I learned this from from a professor in college, which you know I. I agree with every day of my life. Do you want the music to support the video or do you want the video to support the music? Mm -hmm. Because there is a very distinct difference. Unfortunately, I see a lot of people using music that overpowers the video and it should be the other way around. Unless you're making a music video, then the music I... should be the most important. I don't know if you remember, but that was actually my major. It was videography, um, and I had the I had the same uh, version of your professor too. He he actually forbid the use of any music at all for the first half of the semester for our final. Really, that was like you to, didn't do to music. challenge us. He, yeah, he said you are not allowed to use any sound effects or any. It doesn't mean no audio. You only use the natural audio from the camera, but you're not allowed to add sure. music because he wanted us to learn to exactly what we're talking about now oh that's and a I'm, brilliant yeah i remember at one point i i used a little bit of ethereal sound and like we had a debate whether it was okay or not but i appreciate what he was trying to convey to the class to teach us to not rely on that to overpower and take away from the subject that we filmed right and i think that's exactly you know going back to trend versus timeless and what you were talking about of you want the filter to support the photo, not have a photo that has the filter on it. Because, you know, you take a photo and someone asks, oh, what filter did you use? <laughs> the F off filter. That's what. I don't know. <laughs> it don't matter what filter you use. It's, it, yeah, it's the medium. It's the photo. It's the what you create that needs to stand not the filter not the effect not the trend um so now i'm 
curious in your opinion, and I know we've kind of danced on this a little bit already, but I'm curious what for you makes something timeless in your work? Um, I would say high quality. Um, it doesn't matter what era when something was produced, you, you can tell thought and uh, consideration was put into a high quality piece of work. Um, and also your own spin. You know, it's your own thing. If, if I made something four years ago and I'm like, that's not really my style anymore. I don't hate it. I understand where I was at that time. Um, and it was my own. I wasn't too busy trying to do someone else's work or recreate their thing or um, follow a trend. Um, it's staying you know, true to you, what you want to do, your own version. Um, yeah, I think that's timeless. And I think that what you said earlier about when you look back on your work, you're like, oh, what was I thinking with, you know, this or the sphere or whatever it might be. There's a difference if you're like, oh, that piece of work is not up to snuff with where I'm at now, wh whether it's I have better equipment now or I know more now or I've developed my style. You're not upset with yourself. You just see how far you've come. There's no shame in seeing the growth as opposed to, oh man, I was just trying to be like everyone else, you know, going, going along with the fads as they came out. Yeah. You almost call yourself out like your past self out of like, what were you thinking? Mm -hmm. Past Christian. <laughs> yeah. I, I absolutely agree with you with the intention, putting, putting the thought, putting the intention into the piece um, and not, not doing anything other than what's in your head. Like I, for me recently, what I've found in my work in my video work is I'm very intentionally thinking about how to create a natural feeling video. I want to make something that's authentic to the person on screen. And I want to convey their feelings through, you know, what they say on camera, but also the visuals. And if something's a little, a little more lifelike, if something's, if they're talking about something that is um, like maybe a, a struggle or a conflict that they faced, a challenge that they faced, uh, I want to like represent that by like, moving the camera a little bit, not shaking it vigorously, but mm -hmm. like, I want to introduce some movement when it's, when the person's talking about a time where they found peace, maybe have a still static shot or maybe a slow, slow dolly in to represent like that piece or something. That's something that I'm working on right now. And I think it's working. I don't see anyone else really doing it. It's not, that's not a popular style by any means. Um, I, it's, I, con well. it's, it's conveying mood. It's, yeah. If I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dumb down what you just said and translate it over into the DJ world. Okay. But, believe, but, but believe, the reason I'm going to bring it up is because you still hear about and see this very simple idea not being implemented. Um, if I'm DJing for people, I always reflect the energy of the music with my lighting. So if say I'm doing a wedding and I'm doing introductions, uh, lights are probably flashing, they're very animated, same thing if I'm trying to entice people to get into the dance floor, I will use some kind of energetic lighting to match the the music and the energy i'm trying to put out there if it's a if it's a slow dance guess what no strobe lights no fog machines 
you turn the lights to a static, very neutral, chill color because that's the energy you're putting out there. Um, and I still see videos online and from people I know. There, it'll be like a slow dance, and there's just like insane strobes going off from the DJ booth, or like during the first dance, and it's very invasive and disturbing and loud. I'm like, why are they doing that? Why didn't they consider this? This should change. That people could see this, and this is affecting the whole room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to draw a parallel to what you're doing with your your camera motions for what you're trying to convey in that moment. Right, and and, and you and I both, you know, we operate based on intention, and you know, we put thought into what we're doing. I could make all the camera moves shaky because it's more interesting. You could be strobing the lights at all times because you have all the lights that you can, <laughs> you know, just go wild with because you're a party DJ. Yeah. 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 You know, but that's not reading the room. That's not knowing the client and, and kind of absorbing what's happening in front of us. And, and, almost having a conversation with our craft, you know? I think, like I think a lot of it is, here. yeah, I think a lot of it's just being observant and considerate. Mm -hmm. You know, which is why I say, you know, when you get into something, maybe, you know, if it was my first time DJing, maybe I'm like so anxious and worked up and I, I'm not aware that, oh, my lights are flashing and, that's an unpleasant for some people and doesn't matter. And maybe I learned that later, um, be that through a suggestion or just or whatever it might be. But that, that again, that goes back to just growth. Um, not to get off topic, but I, you're, you're growing in your craft when you, you've decided to try these things out. You didn't know that five, six years ago. It's something you developed, whether you, you realized it internally or you were influenced by someone else. Yeah, yeah. And... I'm sure the same goes for you. The first time you ever DJ'd, I'm sure you were focused on the music and, you know, whoops, I forgot to flick off the light or maybe I didn't turn the lights oh, on at all. Or Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when, you, when you're performing a craft in front of an audience, uh, yeah, you have to overcome all those loud emotions first. You have to stop listening to the, your own head and heart throbbing. <laughs> and stop yeah. sweating oh, before yeah. you can look at all the details around you at every moment. <laughs> the pressure's on, right? Right. Yep. Um. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna just make mention of of your photography because I really, I really do think that your photography, as I'm looking it up on my phone right now, I really do think that your photography will hold up in the future i don't think i i think it's great and i think it's eye eye catching and relevant but it's not it, it's yours it is your work it's not someone else's that you decided to take the technique and copy it's your work and i think this is really gonna stand you know five ten twenty years from now like and and not to get into the technicals of why I think your your work will be timeless, but I think that you just have great natural looking exposure, contrast, saturation. You're not trying to do all of these, you know, crazy filters and effects. Oh, you're not boy. trying to you're not trying to bring jack up the the shadow slider. So that like all of the details in the skin are, are, you know, popping because that's not what, that's not what real life looks like. Your photos mimic real life. And as basic as that may sound, it's honestly an underutilized tool. Thank you very much for that. And, um, compliments like that from people like you mean a lot because again you remember when i was on your steps with my 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 play school camera and i'm like i'm ready to join the big leagues i'm ready to throw more money at this and, and utilize so you know my you see me from the start we met through mm -hmm. a photographer 
when I never owned a real camera before. So you uh, you met me right around the beginning of my journey, and so I, I and you're very good at what you do. It, the things you try to explain to me about like lighting and stuff just go whoop, and I love that. I don't need to to know that much, but I love that. I love how you you geek out about it and you implement it. So when you give me any praise at all, it means a lot. Um, but I'm, I have a very expressive face. And when you were going on about some of those things, it triggered me. And that's what this talk is about. And it made me think about, yes, that, that HDR look that goes way overboard. And it, it really upsets the internet. <laughs> Especially uh, real estate, oh boy, just crush the shadows, crush the highlights, uh, clarity all the way, baby. <laughs> oh no, not the clarity filter. All the saturation, yeah. They people go hard. Um, that hurts. I'm like ah. Especially if they've been. And here's the thing, um, you know, and and, and sometimes you see people who have been doing this for a while and and they it's and maybe they, it's their style but like it just it never changes and you're like ah why don't you try fluctuating a little bit i think you could do better because maybe because you know maybe they have composition all these other things down but they're just like they edit the hell out of it if they had just left it alone a little more but again that that, that is that a, a subjective that where it's style yeah, I, I, I do think in this context, you do almost have to go overboard to see, oh, I went overboard. Time to reel it back a little bit with yeah. the editing and the effects. I think the key is like actually seeing, oh, I pushed this too far and not going too far and going, oh, this is great. Post, 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 post. This is who I am. This is my style. It's great. It's the best style ever. And it's like, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> it, it's actually it, one other trend I read about, and maybe it was like a Wired magazine or something like that about it two years ago. They were talking about how younger people, because I'm old, <laughs> they limit the amount of, um, they're very selective with what posts stay in their social media. Um, if something doesn't like get lots of reactions and, and likes and is validation right away, they delete it. Or maybe over time they just delete it and they, they have a very small number of permanent uh, videos or, or pictures or whatever in their feed. I don't know that I've ever deleted anything I've ever had, uh, not because I love everything I've done from the start, um, but just... I personally like to see my own growth and I love when other people do that too. So you can see, you know, oh wow, they started doing this and this went away and just like how it molded and just, I, I to see that in a, a, a quick timeline of, of pictures chronologically, I think it's cool. Oh yeah. I think it's, it's, to, to, it, it's vulnerable from the uh, creator's perspective and I, and I like that. I, yeah, I, I mean, I really don't think anyone should be deleting any of their photos on Instagram or whatever, just because it didn't get enough likes. Like, yeah, you're going you're going to inevitably make something that's cringeworthy, at least in your eyes. But there's a pretty good chance that it's not cringeworthy and it's actually meaningful to someone else. So if you decide, oh, you know what? No, we're cutting it. Take it away. One, that's a disservice to the other people who enjoyed that post. But two, yeah, you're kind of just making a fake you that only there's the only you're, you're the best and there's you have no down points that you have no struggles and you're just the greatest at all times. And no one no one can relate with that kind of person. It's not realistic. Like, no, you, no. You, you can't pick out your outfit for the, for the day, go outside, and because after 10 minutes you didn't get someone to say you look sexy, run home and change. <laughs> You'll never leave the oh, house. Oh, you don't do that? <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. I mean, it's been, what, 35 minutes so far in the stream, and you have not complimented me, so I'll be, I'm going to be right back. Well, you look great and your camera's way better than mine because I couldn't figure out my DSLR in time with the firmware update. So you, well, you win yeah, again. Well, that's, <laughs> <all good. laughs> 
<laughs> that's because there's a million different softwares and updates and that that seemed ridiculous. I can't believe that it was that complex. <sighs> Sorry, you Regardless. just get SD me today. You still look good, Michael. <laughs> thanks, thanks. And your webcam. <laughs> you sound good. You sound good. Thank you. So we've talked about the trends and how they suck. <laughs> and, and they have their place, but not when it comes to creating actual content photos, videos, blog posts, whatever. When you're actually creating something, you don't want to just chase the trends. Memes, memes can be trends. They're meant to be. Memes are not meant to be timeless. Um, so we've talked about the trends. We've talked about what makes something timeless with intentions and thought and really just all of the ideas coming from your head not from other people's successful social media posts. Let's talk about and maybe give advice to someone who is maybe lost in the trends, someone who you know enjoys copying uh, copying trends and trying to, you know, put their own spin on it. Like how, what, what advice could we give someone to move them from trend to timeless? I have a book about this and I wish I, I, I had it with me right now. I think it's called the, the art of the steel or stealing I, art, something I, like I've that. Heard of that book. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard of that book. It's a short read and, um, but one of the essential points is just, you know, it's okay to borrow, but you know, it's on you to, to, to build on that, um, to make it your own. Cause if you just completely mimic someone's idea ad nauseum and, and over and over and over again, it's, it's not yours. It, and yeah, you're just like you said, copy and paste. Uh, so just, you know, I think a good tell is, are you enjoying what you're doing when you're creating? If you if you feel compelled to do something because you're like, this is what everyone's doing right now, so if I want to be seen and I want validation, then I, I need to do, I need to sh sheep it up. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But to put your own spin on it, I think is, is clutch to just, don't be, don't be afraid of, the result of um, how people receive your idea. If you, if you insert your own creativity and put your own spin on something, that's a good failure. I like that. You got a good failure. Yeah. That's, that's failure. an underrated statement. Failure is good. Failure is fantastic. Like you don't just have to learn from what you did, right? Learning from what you did wrong is borderline more, more helpful. I, I mean, and, and also, you know, I, I don't know if we'll see this in our lifetime, but just less worrying about social media in general. Just like, again, are you enjoying making this? Did you, did do you like the final outcome? I mean, you, you, you've, it, something tickled you to say like, I'm ready to share this with the world and hit that publish button and, and share your work. Um, is it something you would enjoy or you would do if you weren't going to share it? Because when I when I see something I want to shoot with my cameras, it's because something goes off. Like that's cool. That's interesting. Uh, yesterday I was walking on the boardwalk in Lake City, and I saw a a woman dressed as Hugh Hefner with five shredded dudes in Playboy bunny outfits. I don't know what I they were doing or what was going on, but I I know I I wanted to capture that, and I did, and um, I, I I shared it today and. You know, I, I I could have gotten no likes or comments or anything, and it doesn't matter. Like I thought that was cool, and I'm gonna think it's cool afterwards. It's just I coincidentally I'm sharing it. Yeah. Uh, just make it your own, man. Do yeah. You do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, 
and not not to be meta but even this stream right here this this conversation that we are streaming uh i mean every every stream i do i don't expect to get any viewers i just talk about things that i think are worth hearing and stuff stuff that is important to me in the moment this conversation is so important to me and i feel like to a lot of people because we see trends every single day and every day there's more and more content that is just thrown onto the internet and inevitably it ends up on our feeds whether we asked for it or not so i think it's important for the people that are throwing the content out there the people that are throwing it out there they want to they want to actually have it mean something they're not just throwing it out to throw it out i mean if they are throwing it out to throw it out then have fun you're going to work 10 times harder to uh gain any sort of traction but i just feel like it's such an important topic no one's watching or next to no one are, is watching uh so i think this will research more <laughs> i think more people are caught up with being an influencer than with just getting the again the vulnerability of just getting their own stuff out there um, it's such a it's such a weird dumb contest <laughs> it is That's, yeah it is i but yeah um all right yeah 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 i guess i guess to someone to someone who is following the trends wants to put content out there that is helpful but they don't know how to move away from the trends i would echo off of your advice of try something completely like like try something that's in your head go around go around in real life and find something that intrigues you not something on the phone something in real life that intrigues you and you know make make your piece of content around that again it doesn't have to be a photo or a video it can be a blog post it can be whatever something that you are putting out into the world focus it around the ice cream shop that serves black ice cream i don't know have you ever seen that black ice oh, cream okay. shop yeah yeah like like it's like vanilla ice cream but it's like dyed black so it's like whoa you know doesn't oh, look like vanilla ice cream but it's vanilla it's reverse crystal right. pepsi that's probably too old for you to know <laughs> i do not get that reference i was i was i was pounding a crystal pepsi when you were being born in a hospital <laughs> We get it. You're old, Michael. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, you know, look, find something that intrigues you, make your content around that, and prepare for it to tank. Yeah. Just um, a ask yourself, you know, if you're if you're you're contributing in any way. Um, you know, it's been said many times over that like any song you can whip up, it sounds exactly like another song that came out earlier because it was inspired by that you find you could find its roots and it just that song came from another song and that song no one like created something absolutely from scratch that just doesn't happen everything comes from something else so you see something that's cool you see something you're into okay but you know it, it's important to try to contribute and what's my spin on this what's how is this unique why should this matter those those are the right questions to be asking yourself. I, I I love that. All right, let me check the stream here. We're going on forty five minutes. I I do cap this at an hour, uh, and I feel like we've, you know, certainly. I feel like you want to talk about down. maybe yeah. I feel like you there's a party that still wants to talk about the the 300 movie effect and you haven't had your opportunity yet. Do you want, do you want to get it off your chest? I, 
I mean, that's <laughs> fine. I, I know, I know, no. I know I've talked to you about this before that the, all right, I will just go full screen explanation. This, this is like angry Christian. I get so angry at this trend and it's not as, I don't know. It's not as popular. Um, I, I see it all the time in the video community because so many people replicate this effect and it, it gets shared and just overdone. But the, yes, the 300 effect, which the person who made it popular was a YouTuber, uh, Daniel Schiffer. And he essentially takes a camera you know, or a phone while well, he takes a camera, but people do it with phones too. Um, where like you shoot, uh, I don't know, a Kahlua video. Like, like you make a drink, a bartender makes a drink with Kahlua and they like film the, the bottle sliding across the table and then they whip the camera across and then um, they like, get a knife and, and slice a fr piece of fruit. And then, you know, they put it in the glass and they like, like kind of like do some crazy spin effect with the camera and then blend it all together. So it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be fluid. Uh, it's, uh, it's so frustrating. Can, you know, it's funny as you're describing it and the visual enters my head, it's been redone so many times that you can hear the audio track they've picked for it as well. Oh, it's, it's like, like a, a, a grungy country song. It's like a brown, 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 whoa, yeah, brown, brown, brown. Oh, like oh, yeah, 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 over and over, man. <laughs> yeah, and that's um with extreme slow mo, just like yeah, you know, making this. This is um, I don't know if you've ever watched Peter McKinnon before. He's another YouTuber. Yeah, yeah yes, uh, yeah. He makes <laughs> coffee all the time. Yes, and he shoots everything super slow mo. The beans, you know, aggressively being poured into the into the coffee grinder in slow mo with that with that music. <laughs> yeah, and, and um, while we're at it, just everyone stop putting tropical house as your youtube vlog background all the oh. tutorial video like everyone just stop it stop it stop it stop it it makes look it makes me turn off your video before you start talking because i just i've had it i it's not that I, I it's not like i don't like the music it's just like i'm tired of the cookie cutter of that yeah especially when people and they don't check levels when they're creating a video and they're their royalty free song they picked is overpowering the actual content. I'm like, I can't hear you. And then I'll put that in the comments and they get mad. Uh, oh, you're just a troll, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I mean, this is actual I'm, feedback. Gen genuine advice. Like, hey, <laughs> I don't know what yeah, this video is about. <laughs> well, there that's that is the classic um like travel vlogger, which is so cliche and so so made fun of especially in like the filmmaking community it's like you're a youtuber that bought a camera that can shoot slow-mo and you went to a tropical vacation and now you're a travel vlogger and it's like no it it's cool okay if you made it if you made it just for you great but if you made it with the intention of Oh, I'm gonna be like this influent travel influencer, and I'm gonna stay at Airbnbs and hotels for free because I make this cool content that everyone loves. It's like you are way, way behind. Like one person got away with that. Now a million people are trying it, and it's like, get out of here. Well, you're you're talking about a uh, category that's you know relevance like they're going they're doing something tropical they want fun tropical music i'm saying that genre sure. of music is on anything like here's how to update your firmware and they have that mute upbeat like music go like why is this the only genre for everything now like if you want to talk about trends wow that's just so, so, <laughs> so two, two things one well, I'm, I'm a little ashamed of it, but I'll own up to it. I did that at one point years ago where I was talking about like back when I did wedding videos and I gave wedding tips and stuff. I had some like more upbeat poppy 
tropical esque music. I regret it. Um, but we're also past it. I owned up to my mistakes. Um, but no, I, I, I have had clients that like want that music, that type of music in their videos. And I'm just like, Hey, you know, we, we, we could, but what about this track instead? You know, I think, I think this might be a good, it kind of fits with the flow of the video much better. And, you know, I, I think we should go with, with this track that actually fits the tone of the video rather than the tropical vlog music. Well, that that's just a whole nother box of worms when you talk about uh, clients making work for clients because it's not completely your creative process. You're you're being paid to create something in the like in the likeness of their 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 taste. So if if they are very much on the trend train, you're limited with what you can do other than give them that song or that or whatever right. it might be. Um, we have control of our own content and you know, uh, that we make for ourselves and how we express ourselves. So, um, and again, and just for clarity, I'm not banishing a whole genre of music. Um, it's just put the right, put it where it belongs. Again, con consider what you have, like what, what, what do I need for this? What is appropriate for this? What fits, this shoe don't just feel like I this has to go in every one of my videos no matter what I'm talking about because that's what I see everywhere around me all the time yeah yeah I now I feel like we are on like the YouTube that let's bash all the YouTube trends and stuff what we see online um, but I, I contextualizing what you're doing is extremely important and while it does annoy me watching like the travel vloggers at a tropical island the tropical music makes sense the here's a tutorial on how to tie your shoe and tropical music is is in the background no <laughs> it, it's not gonna work it it uh, kind of goes to what we discussed yesterday about just in a little bit today but just setting mood you know be very intentional from the get-go and and from your setup to your lighting to um, whatever whatever is relevant to that medium and all the way to the, the post process you know like do I want this to be dark and moody do I want this to be lighthearted like what what is the outcome and the, the production from start to finish should be relevant to that just like the music not you know again trends Could yeah Right, right. Um, you mentioned that with one of your recent recent shoots, and that's that's awesome. You know, you knew what you wanted, and you and you got it there, and you were very happy with the result, and you created a. You, you you're going to be a better videographer and and production person five years from now. But you, I feel confident that you'll look at that video and you'll you'll remember how you feel now. You're like, that was a milestone. I still feel good about this, even if I'm better now or my style has changed or there's better technology or whatever it might be, because there was high quality. You knew the intention. Thank Timeless. you. Yeah. Thank you. I, no, I, I very much appreciate that. And I think going on the topic of walking the client tightrope of creative mm -hmm. decisions, um, which could certainly be its whole or a whole of their video. Um, is you know what does the client want and how how much creative freedom do i have in producing producing work for the client you know ultimately yes i do have a lot of creative freedom because that is the differentiating factor between me and the video production company you know on the other side of town type deal mm -hmm. so i mean it that kind of goes without saying it's great to have the dream client that just defers to you on all aspects of creativity and goes, yeah, I trust you do your thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to love it. Like that's the best. And of course that's, those are the clients we all strive for. Um, but that's, we're not going to get clients 
not every single client is going to be like that. Some clients are going to have more of a creative opinion, which is also fine. Uh, I guess the tightrope that we have to walk is when the clients have an idea that goes with a more trendy concept that, you know, we as creatives with, I don't know, good heads on our shoulders that understand that trends will die. Like we have to go, how much can we steer this conversation? How much can we say, okay, that's an idea. I like this part. What if we took it in this direction? Doing as much as we professionally can to say, hmm, that idea isn't so good. Let's take the best parts from it and, and, you know, make it, take it away from the trends. And that's, you that's want, certainly a hard, hard rope to walk. Do you want attention right away or do you want a portfolio? <laughs> I'm stealing that. I, I like that. Yeah, well, I, I like that a lot. Yeah. Steal do you want it. attention right now or do you want a portfolio to have, you know, moving forward? Mm -hmm. Anyone, anyone, any artist you appreciate, you know, they, it's a slow climb. They, they, they refine what they do and they find their niche and the, it gets traction and it, it's undeniably theirs. I mean, that, I mean, a lot of art, you know, the highest echelon a videographer or a photographer can have is their own style that like they don't see the name. They're like, I know who did that. Oh yeah. There there's a handful of people that I see on Instagram, which is my main, you know, viewing my main social media. It's like, I don't have to look at their name, but I know it's them or have a pretty strong hunch. It's them. And then I look at the name and I go, Oh, I was right. Like that's, that's absolutely a real thing because you see the progression of work, mm -hmm. which you can't do if you delete your bad <laughs> Instagram posts. You can't, you can't build a progression if you take the steps out in between. Yeah. Not, now we're just ranting and raving here. <laughs> Imagine asking like your family for like a, a portrait album and they're just like, where's the first couple of decades of your life? Like, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Oh, well, um, I didn't really like, I didn't, I didn't get too much, too many likes on that. So, yeah. um, you know, yeah, it's the last photo with our dog, but like, who needs it? <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody even remember the dog anyway? <laughs> that sounds terrible. Those bell bombs didn't age well, so we did delete them from history. <laughs> Who cares about that photo of grandma? Mm. Oh my god. Um, I know we've kind of stayed on topic, but at the same time, we've also derailed and and went on tangents. Um, yeah, we're a beautiful marriage of AD, this, AD these, man. these are how our conversations <laughs> go, Michael. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Do you have any last words for, you know, to talk on trends going timeless? Uh, any any last pieces of advice or thoughts? Uh, and then, if not, I want you to uh, put your Instagram, say your Instagram handle, so we can see your phenomenal work. Sure. Um... My Instagram handle is my name, Michael Kane Photography. Uh, I think. <laughs> I believe. Let me. I believe check. it is. I think. I, I th well, no, I think I put it in the description when I made this uh, stream. Okay. It's yes, it is in the description. Michael Kane Photography. Michael Kane Photography. Um, do I have any closing? I think we got it all out there, man. Just. Um, It's you know enjoy what you're creating. Put less put just less emphasis on like you know I, I need to make exactly this and buy this thing to do what's out there because this is what I see. Like if if you want to do something like you're enjoying yourself, but like at the same time, don't forget step two is just like I got to make this my own. I need to take this. I need to contribute. I need to 
take this to the next level. Like, how am I going to make this different? So, um, we, we keep progressing and moving up, moving forward. Um, that, <sighs> stop using tropical house in your videos. I'm Michael that's, Kane. That's the takeaway. <laughs> stop using tropical house. <laughs> Period. Unless you're in Hawaii, don't you dare. <laughs> How about you, Christian? What do you got? Uh, I don't know if I have like final thoughts that haven't already been contributed, but I just do. I, I do want to recap of like just live life outside of your phone. And I do genuinely believe that the curiosity and the ideas will start to come to you and they'll be your own. They won't be something that a ton of people are doing on TikTok. They're going to be your own ideas you can develop those, you can create those, and you can then learn, you know, was this a good idea? What did I, in, what did I like from this idea? What didn't I like so much after, you know, after a couple weeks or a month or a year or whenever, like learn what works, learn what doesn't work and just keep, keep trying new things and refining along the way it'll come naturally it's just repetition 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 it'll While... be a lot more fulfilling too yeah yeah be a lot more you're, fulfilling you're, like you're, you're creating people... what's in your head yeah yeah people people praise you for something you did on your own it's your own thing it's not they, they don't if they praise you like for you copying pasting you, you won't really feel fulfillment and you'll only get that praise for like 24 hours and then it, it gets swallowed up in the void of social media. You create something for you and yes, you'll get the immediate attention when you post it, but then three months down the road, you can pull up that photo or that video or that blog and show it to someone else and be like, oh yeah, I, I made this a couple months ago, a couple years ago. Like, I, I I really enjoy it. That's gonna hold up, and you're gonna you you yourself are gonna feel much more compelled to share that work rather than, you know, following a trend and showing something that a million other people have done. So that's 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 my recap. I remember there, there's a I I don't know if you've seen this. It's trending a lot right now, but there's this clip of I think uh, T Pain on his show. And he's just talking about like her, a couple of current rap artists where he's like, we already have that. We already have this artist, this artist, this artist. We have, we don't need the same thing over and over again. Do your own thing. We already have that. I think that encapsulates what we're talking about pretty well. And exactly. if you don't know what I'm talking about, please look that up online. It's it's a very loud, entertaining two minute bit. Okay. okay. What what um T Pain and just we already have that. I'm sure it will come up just fine. Okay. All right, Google T Pain. <laughs> I'm I'm probably going to do this immediately after we get off the stream. I, I hope all our because I have not seen this. But well, uh, yeah, like I said before, everyone who is watching, who watches the replay, uh, go check out Michael and his fantastic and timeless photography at Michael Kane Photography on Instagram. And is there anywhere else we can uh, connect with you? Um, I have a website that's undergoing major renovations. So okay. uh, yeah, the Instagram, everything that I like, I, I throw up on Instagram. So that's a good place to start. And people can get a hold of you, like direct message on Instagram? Absolutely. Perfect. And if it's not a link to, you know, mail order bride, I will click on that link and I will talk to you. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I just Perfect. got one before we started. <laughs> Did you? Oh, there you go. Hey, man. <laughs> See, you can get married this year. <laughs> That's so trendy. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure mail order brides have been uh, trending for like what the past fifty years. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, everyone, go follow Michael Kane at Michael Kane Photography if you'd like to learn more about uh, creating video for your business and really not just being seen in the eyes of your audience, but being chosen. You can check out my work and some more blog posts at christiangolic.com and that as well is in the video description and until next time michael see you later i'll have a better camera thanks for having me <laughs> thanks buddy bye